going to start with weekly services. Woo. Yeah, we prayed with the elders and it was such a confirmation. So the reason um, you're here is because hopefully you're all united in your love and passion for Jesus Christ. Can I get a little bit into that? But anyhow, the theme of this morning is why. Why do we go to church? Why do we have weekly services? And I'm really excited about that. Anyone else excited yeah. about being yeah. Yes. And you know what? What I did in preparation is um, I asked you. I wanted to ask you, why do you think it's important? Because it's nice that I tell you, but I really want to hear, hear your heart. So I asked some of you why you think, why you're here, and let's have a look at that. Can we turn the lights off? <coughs> Hi everyone and good morning. 
The big question this morning is, why do I go to church? There are various reasons why I go. Firstly, I go because I love to be able to worship God and to praise Him when we're singing, with, when I'm singing with other people. Also, it's a time for prayer with the, one another, but also to listen to God's Word on that Sunday morning, which often encourages me in my own life, not just for the day, but for the, time, the, the coming time. Yeah. Also, I can use that message to pass on encouragement to others. But it's also a time where I can serve God in some small way, and to be able to form friendships, which is really important for me as we move from country to country and city to city. And it's, it's a great way to, to find new friends. Well, the Bible says, do not neglect our meeting together, as some people do. Instead, encourage one another, especially now that the day of his return is drawn near. I think we live in times where it's so easy to get discouraged especially when you're alone and get isolated. But when you're together, you can encourage one another. So I think Paul was writing this for a very specific reason. I get encouraged when I get together on Sunday, and that's why I go to church. Um, well, it's, it's not because I've nothing else to do. It's because I want to go. I, I want to go, and I want to be in the company of other wonderful Christians, and I want to be able to praise God. Uh, I want to be able to be present when the Spirit is present in that environment. But of course, the, um, the, the situation is that uh, we can actually come to God at any time, any day, any place. But on a Sunday, it's a special time when people are focused on one thing, praising God. So we're so glad that I can go, so glad that we're now going to have uh, weekly services, and I'm looking forward to that. Ik kom graag naar de kerk om Oeh. samen met mensen te worshipen, God te ontmoeten en om uh, samen te zijn met andere gelovigen die uh, net als mij uh, Jezus willen volgen en uh, ja, samen God willen loven. Ja, dat is yes. zo mooi. Om vrienden en vriendinnen, broers en zussen te ontmoeten en met elkaar in eenheid te vormen, hem te aanbidden en zijn hem groot te maken, voor hem te knielen en Uiteindelijk hem alle eer en aanbidding te geven die hij doet. Gewoon omdat ik uh, het fijn vind om uh, samen te zingen voor God. Samen hem te aanbidden en samen ook uh, in gebed stil te worden en zijn stem te horen. En daarin ook uh, ja, echt God te ontmoeten. In stille tijd, in aanbidding, <coughs> ook in uh, bemoediging en in de boodschappen. Die, uh, dat we steeds beter leren wat Gods plan is met ons leven. En vandaar dat we ook uh, alle dagen, elke moment van ons leven beslissingen mogen nemen. Uh, ja, en dat is ook de belofte die God geeft in zijn Bijbel. Dat waar er twee of drie zijn, bij elkaar zijn om hem te aanbidden, dat hij daarbij zal zijn en dat zijn geest ook in ons zal werken. En van daaruit uh, ja, dat we ook een zegen mogen zijn voor uh, andere mensen om ons heen. En daar is uh, wat mij betreft uh, elke zondag naar de kerk gaan een belangrijke start om ook de rest van de week daar uh, verder invulling aan te kunnen geven. Well, I just love being in an environment where we can learn and grow together, we can encourage each other, um, learn more about God, and especially being with people of all different ages. It's really special to me. Yeah. Yeah, and of course, it doesn't matter how old you are. I mean, I mean, there's a place for all, and that's the wonderful thing about church. And for me, one of the main reasons uh, to go to church is to show the world what it means for the community. To really be committed to one another, to love one another, sometimes even sacrificially, to learn from one another, to grow together. Um, I think it's almost like a countercultural community in this world, which is so broken apart, where there's so much division, so much in a way also selfishness, being about number one. I mean, church is not being about number one, but it's about serving and loving to be number one. Yes. The one that created us, the one that called us out of darkness into the light. Omdat ik vind het leuk om met vrienden en familie de Heer te aanbidden. En ik vind het super leuk om naar de kinderdienst te gaan met alle kinderen tegelijk. En daar lekker te spelen en goed aanbidden. Because we want to worship God, we want to serve Him, we want to do this together. We are with the church all together, we are the house of God, the family of God. 
and uh, that inspires me to go to the church and not uh, forget the church services and uh, have joy together. I go to the church because I love God and he says in his word that we have to go to the church so I just do it. <laughs> learning from his word also. That's why I go to the church. I like going to church because then I learn more about Jesus. I like it because there are really nice kids in Jesus and they do nice activities. I like the music and I like singing along to all the songs. And I like it because I had a lot of new friendships when I went to church for the first time. And I love seeing all our friends again. I think it's important to go to church because I need the encouragement knowing that there are other Christians, other believers around me. And I like uh, the adventure of being in church together as the body of Christ uh, because Jesus thought it was very important that the church, his, his bride, is unified and works together in love. The disciples had to learn that being from different backgrounds, different ages maybe, different personalities, and they had to work together and love each other. And that can be an exciting adventure and maybe sometimes challenge also for us. It's good to be church together. Waarom ik op zondag naar de kerk ga, is omdat ik het heel fijn vind om meer te leren over God, meer te horen over Hem uh, en het geloof te kunnen delen met andere christenen, uh, lief en leed te kunnen delen, uh, te kunnen worshipen, zingen en God groot maken. Uh, dat is mijn reden. We go to church because we love God and we love others. It's a great place to grow and be encouraged by others in our wonderful community. To remind ourselves of who we are and whose we are. It also gives us time to spend uh, with our extended family here in the Netherlands. And to remind ourselves of our living hope, Jesus Christ. We want to talk about God's life, by the preken, and we want to bid by the worship, and also vooral for the community. And that I find it very fijn vind om met mensen te praten en je gedachten en je hart te legen en luchten en ook van anderen te kunnen leren en hen dat te kunnen bijbrengen. Hoe jij in het leven staat met je gedachten en ideeën. Daarom ga ik naar de kerk op zondag. Het is fijn om als gezin van God bij elkaar te komen. Het is zo fijn om elkaar te kunnen bemoedigen en om bemoedigd te worden. Uh, ik denk niet dat God ons gemaakt heeft om alleen te zijn. En, uh, het is echt een feestje om uh, samen God groot te maken. Uh, weer nieuwe dingen te ontvangen die we weer uit kunnen delen door de week heen. Als we het een keer lastig hebben, dat we er voor elkaar zijn. En uh, soms ben jij sterk en kan je een andere bemoedigen. Uh, soms heb je zelf een bemoediging nodig. Maar uh, ja, het is heerlijk om... Uh, met mede christenen en gelovigen God te aanbidden en groot te maken en aan zijn koninkrijk te bouwen. The church is very important. It's a place where we get together to honor our Lord Jesus and to worship Him. And we come together putting aside our differences and our troubles to be united in purpose in remembering Him and encouraging one another, another on in our faith. The reason why I go to church on Sundays and don't stay at home is because of the community. It's because so that we can worship Christ together with all different people from all ages, from all uh, different backgrounds. And also I have seen that there's something that the gospel teaches that um, about his promises, about his plans for our lives, about his peace that we cannot find anywhere else. Um, in this world. So those are the reasons why I like to go to church on Sundays. Ja, waarom gaan we naar de kerk? Dat is eigenlijk best wel een goede vraag. Uh, ja, jij niet en jij hebt een hele tijd. Maar wij gaan wel. Ja, en waarom gaan we? Iemand zei ooit, naar de kerk gaan is als het ware dat je een horizontale en een verticale ontmoeting kan hebben. Dus verticaal met God, met de hemel. Je kan hem aanbidden en hem ontmoeten. En horizontaal met mensen. Met je broers en zussen, met je kerkfamilie. Ik vind het echt wel een heel mooi beeld. Dus naar de kerk gaan is voor ons een horizontale en een verticale ontmoeting. Oké, okay. wat wij uh, fijn vinden aan uh, samenkomen in de garden op zondag is uh, het goed gevoel dat je er niet uh, alleen voor staat. Dat vind ik wel fijn. Ja, en soms heb ik ook vrienden die niet geloven, dus het is wel fijn om onder andere gelovigen te zijn. Uh, ja, ik weet niet, de sfeer is gewoon heel prettig. Ik, 
Dat is ook best wel fijn. Ik vind het gewoon fijn om met z'n allen samen God te aanbidden. En uh, ja, samen meer verdiepen in de Bijbel en meer te leren over hem en dan het met elkaar te over hebben. Um, ja, dat is gewoon ja, het community gevoel. Dat, dat, ja, daar hou ik gewoon heel erg van. Dus dat vind ik heel erg leuk. Going to church on Sunday for me is just a lifelong habit. Um, I think there's so much power in habits and it's, I've done it my entire life and it's definitely a routine that I want to instill in my children. Uh, I think the power of that routine is that during periods where you might have drifted far from God or you're feeling the spiritual dryness, uh, you just keep going to church and you keep off that habit and you never know which service or which sermon um, is really going to speak to you and kind of bring that feeling of closeness and really start to grow your faith again. And for me, it's really a refresh. Um, you know, some weeks can be long or exhausting or tiring, but for me it's great to know that at the end of every week uh, there is this opportunity to refresh spend some time in church to sort of get away from it all and just be with God. Uh, and I really do walk away every week feeling rejuvenated and refreshed and, and ready to take on the next week. And there's something beautiful in just being able to do it all together with other Christians. I think it brings a feeling of worship and really giving glory to God in a way that um, you can't really get when you're just home alone. So uh, we love church on Sundays and um, are excited that the garden will be going every week. Ik wil naar de kerk om jullie te ontmoeten, om vrienden te ontmoeten, om familie te zien. Want dat weet je toch nu je wel toch vaak je familie en vrienden zien. Om elkaar te bemoedigen, om elkaar op te bouwen en om nieuwe mensen te ontmoeten. En samen, samen vieren we het feest. Een feest voor God. We aanbidden God, we verhogen Jezus, we willen meer van de Heilige Geest ontvangen. We leren uit het woord en samen groeien we in God. Meer van Jezus, elke dag opnieuw. Samen weet je, zijn we de kerk. Waarom ga ik naar de kerk? Waarom ben ik in de garden? Elke zondag of in elk geval probeer ik dat te zijn. Uh, dat is een hele goede vraag en een mooie vraag. En uh, ik wil daar ook graag antwoord op geven. Uh, ik denk dat het geweldig is en een voorrecht om uh, elkaar te ontmoeten, om God te ontmoeten, met elkaar God te aanbidden. Ik geloof dat daar kracht in zit en uh, ja, tegelijkertijd dat we, dat we mogen uitreiken en uh, kerk mogen zijn voor de mensen om ons heen, voor de gasten die God nog niet kennen. We kunnen met z'n allen wel, uh, we, kunnen, we, kunnen heel, we hebben heel veel aan de, aan de preek, aan wat, er, wat er verteld wordt. Uh, daarnaast hebben we gasten die komen ook heel veel aan ons eigen verhaal, aan uh, hoe, hoe wij het leven doen, hoe wij het geloof uh, beleven. En uh, dus ook de gesprekken bij de koffie die zijn enorm belangrijk. En uh, daarom, uh, daarom uh, ga, zit ik in de kerk ook zondag. Mooi zeg. Ja. Ik ga naar de kerk om de Heer te dienen, te ontmoeten, te willen van de geloof. De eerste dag van de week. Dat is mijn, dat is mijn bedoeling. Amen. <laughs>
because as I was preparing, I was kind of getting distracted and discouraged by all the discussions that have been going on about the so-called post-pandemic post church. What is that? People have been experiencing not going to church very differently. For a year and a half, you've not been <coughs> able to go. Some people have missed it a lot and are saying, what is the need? Do we really have to come together every week? Or maybe a small group is enough, or maybe twice a month. And there's so many conversations going on and opinions about the church, rethinking the church, adapting church. What does church look like post-COVID? You know, these are interesting discussions, and we have to be aware of what's going on around us in Christian Holland, let's say. But it can keep us away from the focus of the why. Why church? And in the end, it's not interesting at all. Because you know what happened? We were not able to come together for a while, and now we can again. <laughs> That's all that happened, really. I know. Church, I mean, COVID has affected many of us, but it should not and, ha and has not affected uh, the, the personally, it hasn't affected us as a church. Maybe a better way to put it, it doesn't define us. Our circumstances don't define us. Seasons change, a garden is still a garden. The tree has been shaken, yes, no doubt about it. Leaves has fallen off, maybe some dead branches. That happens when it's fall and winter. Because, but you know what? We're still standing, the tree is still standing because its root grows down deep. Look in Jeremiah 17, 7 verse 8. It says, but blessed is the one who trusts in the Lord, whose confidence is in him. They will be a tree like a tree planted by the water that sends out its roots by the stream. It doesn't fear when heat comes. Its leaves are always green. It has no worries in a year of drought and never fails to bear fruit. Another translation said delicious fruit. I'm like, ooh. <laughs> <laughs> you are not defined by your circumstances. You are defined by what Christ says about you. And Jesus loves you. We are secure in Him. Church is still church. Can you get an amen to that? It's not a denomination or institution in itself. You know, church, the body says it's the bride of Christ. It's the body of Christ. And Jesus, Jesus, He hasn't changed. If He's the body of Christ and Jesus hasn't changed, He's the same yesterday, today, and forever. In other words, we are even, in anything, we have more intention and more eagerness to come together because we can. Through the pandemic, God has really been faithful to us and he has blessed us so much with the online services. Soon, you know, as soon as our uh, online stream is ready again, we will use this tool to get to people who otherwise wouldn't be able to come to miss out because of sickness or whatever reason. And it's a wonderful tool. It's, it's, it's something we have to keep doing. By the way, did you know that people are here because of our online services? They watched us, they followed us? Mm -hmm. Definitely, we will keep on online services because church is not online church. It's not the same. It cannot replace us coming together as a congregation. And truth be told, I'll be honest with you, I liked it myself to have those two Sundays in between that I could watch an online service, either hours or crossroads or whatever, or some, some more even, in my PJs, with my cup of coffee, my <laughs> breakfast. You know, it's like, oh, this is cool, it's relaxed. <laughs> so comfortable, so convenient, right? Yeah. That we cannot just turn on and sit and so many, oh, so nice and convenient. Friends, at the heart of discipleship, at the heart of discipleship has nothing to do with comfort and convenience. 
It has everything to do with commitment and sacrifice. Jesus never told us that following him would be easy and convenient. Let me repeat, at the heart of discipleship is not comfort or convenience, but commitment and sacrifice. And that's why these teams are here serving every morning. And I mean, I look at these people that do this, and I'm like, wow, you know, it's to bless you. So why do we go to church? Actually, Acts 2.37 tells us very, very beautifully. This is what it says. They devoted themselves to the apostles' teaching, which is discipleship teaching, and to fellowship, which was the breaking of bread, and to prayer. Remember when we first got in the garden in our backyard? The fellowship? The food? Yes. The faith and food thing was really a good thing. And anyhow, this is all talking about communion, of course, but everyone was filled with awe and the many wonders of signs performed by the apostles. All the believers were together and had everything in common. They sold property and possessions to give to anyone who had a need. This is service. Every day they continued to meet together in the temple courts. Every day they broke bread in their homes and ate together with glad and sincere hearts, praising God. This is worship and enjoying the favor of all the people. And the Lord added every day to their number. This is outreach. These are the five purposes of church. It's worship, it's fellowship, it's discipleship, it's outreach, and, anyone? Service. The early church was very close and the Christians were together. They really stuck together. They didn't live out their Christianity and their faith by themselves. It's actually impossible to do that, to live out your Christianity by yourself. You cannot fulfill those purposes. Those purposes, how can you, how can you fellowship by yourself? How can you give to yourself in the sense of, you know, how can you reach out to yourself? All these, all these actions require a relationship. Relationship with God and with one another. And that's why we're here, because of relationship. The relationship that we have with each other. And church is not a building, friends. Jesus Christ did not die for a building. He died for you and I. So it's not an event. It's so much more. I'm sorry. I have to look again. It's so much more. Jesus gave his life for people so that our relationship can be restored for whoever believes in him. This is the body of Christ and we all have a part in this. This is an introduction today. Next week I will talk about the different levels of fellowship. Uh, fellowship in suffering, fellowship in sharing, fellowship in the service. I will talk more about the how, but today is really about the, the why and the what. And the why is again the command that God gave us in the Old Testament is love your the, the, the Lord God with all your heart, all your soul, all your mind, and all your strength and mind as your neighbor. God's purpose for your life is to get to know Him and love Him. And this means growing in your identity as a child of God. Everything starts with this in life. Knowing God, knowing that you're loved by Him, and, and, and understanding the redemption that has come from Him. You're forgiven, we're set free. Can I, free, can I get an amen? Amen. You're no, we are no longer slaves of sin. And this truth is life transforming, life transforming. It's the goodness of the gospel. It's why we're here. We're unified in our love for Jesus Christ by the power of the gospel that has set us free. Yeah. And his love has transformed us so much that, look, I never thought I would stand here, <laughs> ever. It's a miracle, but with God, all things are possible. 
And this is the mission and the vision of the garden. Our purpose, our meaning, you can read it right there or right there. We are rooted in Christ, and this has to do with our identity, who we are, knowing that, that you are secured in God's and Jesus' love. You know what, this world, wouldn't you say, is in a huge identity crisis? Look at our teenagers, look at our young people, Generation Z. What's going on? They don't know anymore. He, she, they, them. So much confusion about identity. We grow in our faith. This means we grow in discipleship. We study the word. We know scripture. And I'm not talking about memorizing scripture and then being able to say it. I'm talking about knowing, understanding, applying it in your heart. Being able to explain your faith to others. Applying God's principles in your life. This can only happen when we spend time with God daily. This growing in faith is by the word, the, the word of the Lord, the Bible is the bread of life. We don't only eat on Sundays, do you? You eat every day. Yes. Breakfast, people. Yes. Quiet time. <coughs> Even if it's just a little, just eat and grow strong. So what is that the one who meditates on God's word will be like a tree planted by streams of water. So we need to learn to feed ourselves, not be dependent on, on preachers even. You have to be able to stand on your own in this time and age, to know what you believe. And not just on Sunday. And then we start to flourish in life. That's my favorite thing, flourish. Flourish. Here, you to flourish. Flourish has everything to do with your God-given potential. Why are you here? What special talents and gifts has God given you to, to give back? You know, there's only things that you can do that no one else can do. God made you unique to glorify him in your life. And I will tell you something else. Flourish, I mean, I believe in being the best person you can be. I believe God gives you this potential. He wants you to flourish in life. And he wants you to be the best and the better and every day more. But you know what? It's not about you. You're not supposed to flourish in life and be successful because, you know, just because. This enrichment is for the benefit of others. So you can bless them. That's what Jesus taught us. He came to serve us. And we can serve us by flourishing, by using our potential, by making a difference in this world. When you're successful, when you do things that, I don't care if you're a taxi driver, or a businessman, or a teacher, you know, a student. God gives you the, the, the talents that you have so you can go out and bless people with that. That's how you flourish. Yeah. And that's also how we become fruitful. That's God's purpose in the end. We share the love of God. We become fruitful. The new good news of the gospel. We love God. We love people. God in relationship with us. And us in relationship with each other. Yeah. This is not something that you have to do by yourself. We need each other for this. God's will and design for your life was never to walk out your Christian life by yourself. You are part, and that's why you're here. Of God's family. Yeah. Yay! Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> so the church is a family. It's a spiritual family that we are invited to belong to. You were formed to be part of this family. Look at your name and say, "Hey, we are family." <laughs> <laughs> who made all things and all things are for his glory he wanted to have many <coughs> children to share in his glory he wanted to have many children to share in his glory 
He's saying God wanted a family. That's why he created us. He, he created this entire universe so we were born in it and we be, could be called his children. Yeah. I mean, that's mind blowing in itself. Yeah. In Ephesians 1 verse 5, it says, God's unchanging plan has always been to adopt us into his own family by bringing us to himself from Christ Jesus. Wow. This book, the Bible, is about a love story. It's a story of God building a family and we can each be part of that. An eternal spiritual family. God wants to love each other, for us to love each other and love us in return. Yeah. He says in Peter, two verse 13, love your spiritual family. So fellowship is actually the word that the Bible describes, that the Bible describes to love each other. Mm. Or you could say fellowship is learning to love each other. And next week I will focus, like I said before, more on this, what is it? What, what, how do we fellowship? How do we love each other then? Some tools. What does it mean? But in conclusion, gosh, I can't believe I'm almost finished. Because <laughs> <laughs> I, I just, I'm so blessed that you are all listening to me. In the <laughs> <laughs> ben, do you want to come forward? Why church? Because we can, you know? If you look in China or you look in Afghanistan where people are persecuted for their faith, they don't have the freedom to come together. Can you imagine saying, oh, maybe I'll go today because I feel like it or not? Can't you like, are you kidding me? You can meet every week? That is fantastic. Yeah. And of course, you know, what I said about those five reasons of church, it's not one or the other. It's not only the online service or the small group. It's all of that together. We have a vision. We have a vision for a community center that we will be after this, that we can share meals, that we, it's all day. It's every day. It's not just Sunday, guys. Church is your, should be your life. It should be who you are. And so we have a responsibility to step into that, to start to, to realize the necessity of, of us being a body of believers, the power that comes from that, what we can do, how we can reach people with God's love, because this is such a broken and dying world. People need the hope of Jesus. People need to know that he restores lives, that he, he's the healer, you know, he's the provider. He never leaves us nor forsakes us. And maybe, maybe there are people here that have been disappointed by church. But, but I just want to tell you, this is the message. Don't confuse the pain of other people and hurt with God's plan and purpose for the church, for your body, for the body of Christ. Yeah. Don't. I've been there, and maybe I will talk about it now. I've been there. God showed me I was deceived. I have to connect. We have to connect because we are together the body of Christ. Yeah. In closing, God's grace and love is revealed in the saving work of Christ. Jesus loved us so much that he gave his life for us. He restored our relationship with God. Jesus founded the church and called it his body on earth. He is the one who's calling us to come together and be the church. And he gave us the Holy Spirit. To worship him, to have fellowship, to serve one another, to disciple one another, and to reach out to those who don't know him yet. Today is like a feast, a celebration, a party, where we, it's like a shower you come onto and you, together you are equipped and empowered to then step out in the week, fully refreshed, fully, fully confirmed by your task that you have as Christians. That's why we're here. And that's why it's such a joy to invite other people and say, come, you know, 
fellowship in a small group, yes, keep doing that. But this is everyone. And this is full of power. Let's, let's ask God. If you don't belong in a family yet, I don't, I mean, yes, the garden welcomes you. I, but I don't even care where. Just plant yourself somewhere. Because we do need to be planted to grow and get those roots down deep. Let's pray. Lord Jesus, we thank you so much. We're so grateful that we can come together as a church to worship you, Lord, to, to serve you, to learn from you, to hear your voice calling our names, calling us home, giving us this place, Lord, that we can call family. All for your glory, God. All for your glory. <coughs> I just want to pray for those people, maybe some of you have been feeling far away. And Lord, I pray that you will gently pull them back to your heart Whoever God has maybe been disappointed, I speak words of healing in your life, that you will be able to surrender yourself again and trust God. There's no shame or condemnation in Christ Jesus, and he wants to set you free today. He wants to receive you in his loving arms. May today be a new commitment, a recommitment, a day of recommitment to you, Lord. I pray for anyone here that needs your touch. <laughs> Bless them and touch them in Jesus' name. God wants you to know that you belong in his house. He wants to be your loving father. He wants to care for you. You never have to be alone. You are a child of God. In Jesus' name. Amen.